Absolutely, and I'll sort of build on some of uh, Ben's comments because I think what he articulated is one of the killer use cases of VMware Cloud on AWS that I think is driving that momentum, right? Which is, um, we think it's one of the best solutions in the marketplace, and customers have told us this, to enable them to migrate and modernize, uh -huh. right? So let's talk about the migrate piece first, right? When you have customers that have these tremendous enterprise class applications running on vSphere in their data centers, they're built on top of that platform, they depend upon it for performance, availability, everything else. With VMware Cloud and AWS, we can migrate those applications with zero downtime, no refactoring, no additional costs, in a matter of weeks or months, as opposed to if you had to refactor everything, it could take years and millions of dollars, right? So that cloud migration use case, I would say is the, is the killer for us, and that's you know, exactly what Ben was referring no, we're definitely seeing that, and I think that's the thing that really got me excited about a year ago, was watching enterprises make that transition and say, you know what, the center of gravity has gone from architectures inside the on-prem data center, is now moved to in the cloud. I mean, that shift has happened, it happened, to, people talked about it five years ago, but they didn't mean it. And now when you talk to enterprises, they are actually moving into the cloud, not just talking about it, and they're saying, we're, that is the center of gravity. And what's interesting to me was, I think even just the tone the, of Andy Jassy today and what he was talking about was, it's once you define what your architecture is, you push it everywhere. So cloud 1.0 and 2.0 was really more about taking my architecture that was on-prem and pushing it into the cloud. So let me take a virtual appliance, a virtual router, basically my hardware router, package it up, put it on the cloud. That's not cloud native, it's cloud naive as we talk, right? And so what's the change that's happened is now everybody realizes the center of gravity is in the cloud and you start seeing things like outposts, you see things like wavelength, you see things like um, you know, uh, TTW network manager, things getting pushed out, the architecture of the cloud now actually pushing out and extending out into on-premises. I've been at it for a couple of decades. So in the beginning, there was a lot of evangelism that this is safe, it's consumable by the enterprise, it's not some kind of crazy idea to bring open source, you're, you're not going to lose your intellectual property or things like that. Those days, I mean, I, I'm sure you could find an exception, but those days are largely over in, this, in the sense that open source has gone mainstream, so I would say open source is one. Most large enterprises have an open source strategy. They consider open source as critical to not only how they source software from vendors, but also how they build their own applications. So the world has really, really evolved, and now it's really a question of uh, where are you partnering with vendors to build infrastructure that's critical to your business, but not your differentiator, and where are you leveraging open source uh, internally for your, to differentiate your business. And I think that, you know, that's a more sophisticated view. It's not the safety question. It's not, is it, a, is it legally, uh, you know, there, you're bringing legal concerns into the picture. It's really a much different conversation. And people in the enterprise are looking, how can we contribute to these projects? So mm. that's really, it's pretty exciting actually. Both are uh, great place for startups, right? They're not mutually exclusive. So I think if you go horizontal, uh, the amount of data being created by your applications, your infrastructure, your sensors, time series data, ridiculously large amount, right? And that's not going away anytime soon. I recently did an investment in Chronosphere, which you guys covered over at, at KubeCon a few weeks ago, that's talking about metrics and observability data, time series data. So they're going to handle that horizontal amount of data, petabytes and petabytes, how can I query this quickly, deeply, with, with a lot of insight. That's one play, right? Cheaper, better, faster, at scale. The next play, like I said, is vertical. It's how do I own data or slice the data with more context that no one else can have. We talked about like the virtual cycle of data, right? This the system of intelligence, if you will. If I own a set of data, be healthcare, government, or self-driving car data that no one else has, I can build a solution end to end and go deep. And so either pick a lane or, or pick a, a geography, you can go either way. It's hard to do both though. It's hard, for startup. For a startup. Even any big company. It's, it's hard. Like, very few companies can do two things well. Startups yeah. especially succeed by doing one thing very well. I mean, I'm impressed they got two CEOs. The CEO of, of Goldman Sachs, David Solomon, and the CEO of Cerner, 
coming to the show. This is kind of rare that the CEO of your customer comes to the show. I guess the second thing I'd say is, you know, Amazon is not a rinse and repeat company at these shows, although they are when it comes to shock and awe. So they tick the box on shock and awe, but you're right, John, they're talking a lot about transformation. I would sort of think of it as disruption. Here's what I would say to that. Amazon has a dual disruption agenda. One is it's disrupting the horizontal technology stack, and two, it's disrupting industries. It wants to be the platform of which startups, in particular, but also incumbents, can disrupt industries. And it's in their DNA because it's in Amazon's DNA. And I guess the last thing I'll say is Amazon is the retail, Amazon retail is the you can buy anything here store. And now to your point, Justin, Amazon Web Services is you can get AWS anywhere, at the edge, in the little mini data centers that they're bringing out, on outposts, and of course, in the cloud. No, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I'd say uh, primarily we're most uh, kind of uh, pleased with the variety of workloads and uh, use cases that customers are bringing us into. Uh, you know, I think when we started out uh, on this journey, we saw a tremendous promise for the technology to really improve the AWS ecosystem and customer experience uh, for people that wanted to consume block storage in the cloud. Uh, what we learned as we started working with customers is that um, because of the way we've architected the product, brought a lot of the same capabilities we deliver on our flash arrays today into AWS, it's allowed customers to take us into all the same types of workloads that they put flash arrays into, right? So that's their tier one, uh, you know, mission critical environments, uh, their VMware workloads, their Oracle workloads, their SAP workloads. Um, they're also looking at us from everything from, you know, to do lift and shift, uh, test and dev uh, in the cloud, uh, as well as DR, right? And, and that, again, I think, you know, speaks to a couple things. It speaks to the durability, the higher level of service that we're able to deliver uh, in AWS. Uh, but also the compatibility with which we're able to uh, deliver the same sets of features and you know, have it operate in exactly the same way on-prem in the cloud. Because look, if you're going to DR, uh, the, last time, you know, the last point in time you want to discover that there's a caveat, hey, this feature doesn't quite work the way you expect, is when you have a DR failover. And so the fact that we set out with this mission in mind to create that exact level of sameness, um, you know, it's really paying dividends in, in the types of use cases that customers are bringing us into. I think uh, we're delighted. You know, Mike obviously, uh, and I have been friends for years, he's had some connections with VMware in his past that, that, that certainly helped in setting up <laughs> this partnership, so we're grateful to Mike and Andy and the team for that. And it's you know, two and a half to three years now since we announced it. Uh, tremendous amount of customer interest. Listen, you know, we, we said at the beginning of this, when you take sort of the king of the public cloud and the king of the private cloud together, and don't force customers to say these have to be separate doors, you can do them both together. Customers like that message, and what we've been really doing over the course of the last 12, 18 months is perfecting use cases for this platform. I think to us, the key word is migrations, cloud migrations. Uh, when people are moving their workloads off an app, off VMware, vSphere, or our cloud foundation, we want this to be the best place for it to land, VMware Cloud and AWS, for a migration opportunity. And anything short of that, uh, refactoring app would be, you know, not something that would be a good use of people's time and money, because they should be then modernizing with all the wonderful services that Amazon's built once they've migrated. So we've really perfected our message uh, in the course of the last six, 12 months to two M's, migrate and modernize, migrate and modernize. So we could migrate you into this avenue and then modernize with a set of container and other services. Uh, so that message working, we put on stage at VMworld, and there are many of them here, two big uh, Amazon customers, uh, VMware Cloud and Amazon, uh, Freddie Mac and IHS Market, and they were telling our tens of thousands of customers at those shows, and similarly many of them here, that that's the best option to be able to do things. Yeah, so if you know public sector, public sector actually has a lot of Windows or Microsoft workloads in it. And so we're seeing a lot of public sector customers looking to modernize their Windows workloads. Um, in fact, we made several announcements just yesterday around helping more public yep. sector customers modernize. Um, for example, one is uh, Windows Server 2003 and 2008 will go out of support, and so we have a great new offering with technology that can help them to not refactor, but actually abstract those layers and move quickly to 2016 and 2019, because both of those will go out of support in January. 
Yeah. Right. And Dave mentioned, you know, cloud first strategies, but we're also seeing a lot of movement around data. You know, data is really powerful. Andy mentioned this as well yesterday. But for example, in our partner keynote, where I just came from, uh, we had on stage Avis. Yeah. Now, Avis, not public sector customer, but what they're doing is, the, the gentleman said, you know, your car can now talk to you. And that data is now being given to local state officials, local city officials. They can use it for emergency response systems. So that public and private use of data coming together is also a big trend that yeah. we're seeing. It's all about breaking down, I mean, if, if DevOps was all about breaking down silos between Dev and operations and, and other parts of the business, DevSecOps or Secure DevOps or whatever we want to call it, is, is just bringing more people into the fold and helping security join that party um, and get at things earlier in the cycle so we can catch it before it, you know, before, before there's a breach that's in the news. Yeah, so you know, I think there's going to continue to be convergence between Amazon Business and AWS over time and, and the marketplace. We offer kind of a goods marketplace, they offer a software marketplace and a, and a services marketplace. And so I think we're still working on how do we harmonize that experience better and we've got a lot of work to do there. Uh, we have a saying at Amazon that it's always day one and that's a great example where we still have a lot of work to do. Um, but one of the things that is uh, another one of our partners, Coupa, which is a, a procure to pay platform and a long time Amazon business partner, uh, we've done some pretty creative things to improve the user experience and make it easier for customers to use both Coupa and Amazon business in, in concert together. Coupa announced a couple months ago that they've built a, an integration to the AWS marketplace. And so um, that's a pretty exciting opportunity where uh, people who are provisioning services via AWS, the AWS marketplace can have that, that transaction flow seamlessly into their procure to pay solution and let you know, the user who's provisioning that focus on what they want to do, which is developing new solutions to serve customers. I mean, the spectrum's massive, so the, the, our biggest challenge is keeping up with everything and continuing to innovate with all the things that are happening, but again, the benefits of the platform that we have enables us to do that and the enhancements we made this year. This year. Um, now that our platform is, is more open, we can connect da collect data from multiple entities, not just the New Relic uh, agents that, we've, that we were built on. So uh, the concept of observability and being able to observe the entire application environment get, um, is built on the fact that data's got to come from all these different places, then we need to turn that around and curate it uh, into the right experience and the right use case that the customer is looking for. So, uh, all I can say is that uh, our, our company's built on innovation, we try and stay on the cutting edge of all that, try and stay current with that, and meet the customer's needs as, as everyone here is innovating like crazy at scale. Well, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of the technology we build comes from things that we're doing ourselves, you know, and that we're learning ourselves. It's kind of how we started thinking about microservices, uh, serverless too, we, we saw the need, you know, we would have, we would build all these functions that when some kind of object came into an object store, we would spin up compute, all those tasks would take like three or 400 milliseconds, then we'd spin it back down, and yet we'd have to keep a cluster up in multiple availability zones because we needed that fault tolerance, and it was, we just said, this is wasteful, and that's part of how we came up with Lambda. And the, you know, when we were thinking about Lambda, people understandably said, well, if we build Lambda and we build this serverless event-driven computing, a lot of people who are keeping clusters of, of instances aren't going to use them anymore. It's going to lead to less absolute revenue for us. But we, we have learned this lesson over the last 20 years at Amazon, which is if it's something that's good for customers, you're much better off cannibalizing yourself and doing the right thing for customers and being part of shaping something. And I think if you look at the history of technology, you always build things and people say, well, that's going to cannibalize this and people are going to spend less money. What really ends up happening is they spe spend less money per unit of compute, but it allows them to do so much more that they ultimately, long term, end up being you know, more significant customers. Look, I mean, the, 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 show, the show, as Dave Vellante says, Amazon always delivers with the shock and awe. You know, broadest and deepest, so many pieces here. Uh, you know, I took a selfie with uh, many people and the biggest celebrity of the show, AWS Outpost, the rack, it's over in the corner there. Uh, and uh, people are asking me about all the gear inside. I said, you should stop asking about that because you will never touch it, only AWS will. So put a curtain around it, it's managed as a service, and 
that's what I think people are still trying to understand. We've been talking about cloud for, what, 15 years now, but Amazon's positioning on cloud is still different than everyone else's. When I think back to some of the waves, there's that buzzword, and there's one or two that really architecturally are different and deliver, and Amazon laid out their strategy even more, and through the geeky pieces, and transformation was the theme.